Well, it's finally here, the Ultimate Draft Kit. It releases today. We talk about its release. We talk about a quick question in which we somehow agree as a three-pack on two major hot takes in the fantasy football world. We answer a bunch of questions and a whole lot more. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy. The time is coming swiftly. The middle rounds are now close to the unskilled. Yet here you are. I'm prepared, you fools. This season you'll find all kinds of foes eager to watch your draft crumble with wasted picks. There can only be one ultimate draft kit. Only one that can bend them to its will. And it does not share power. You must wield the UDK and send your opponents back to the shadows. You shall not pass on this chance to send your league mates into the deep. Fly, you fools, to ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. With your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's UDK time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Went back and forth. You pulled it off because... The, the the syllables would say it's draft kit time, but yeah, the, that's what I thought you were gonna go with. Yeah, but it's not the it's not draft kit day. It's this not isn't just just a yeah. draft kit. It's the ultimate draft kit. It's letting you know that Woo-wee. of the draft kits, this one is the most ultimate. Indeed, it is. Welcome in, one and all, to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. The date, June first. The wait. It's gone. It's over. It's done. The UDK is here. Thank you for joining us for today's show. Uh, We're excited. The 2023 Ultimate Draft Kit, the culmination of many, many months of uh, hard work, analysis, projections, and a shout out to the entire team here at the Fantasy Footballers for all of their efforts. Good work, team. Uh, From testing to uh, to editorial, everything. Yeah, and And ultimately... For ultimately us, ultimately right. we, just, we celebrate. Yeah, we celebrate the three of us um, who pretty much did the biggest heavy lifting. Uh, but it's not over. <laughs> you know, we we uh, released it today. It is live. Uh, if you have already pre-ordered, go browse, go take a look, see what you like, see what feedback you have. If you haven't got yours yet, if you've been waiting for it to be out, go to ultimatedraftkit dot com right now and get it. But the you know this, it's not done. We're we're working on it every day from here till kickoff. Should we consider going? What are those the when they get the petitions going? Uh, they're called petitions. No, I know, but there was yeah. like the actual one where apparently, like, if it gets signed enough, it goes to like change dot org. Yeah, something, like, something that? like that. Yeah, someone will do it. Get it, get it going. That June first needs to be a national holiday. I see where you're going to be celebrated by. I would say See, all Americans, like a tough, but a tough one to pull off. And do we have the authority to make a global holiday? Has anybody ever done that? I mean, if anyone can do it, it's the Americans. Let's let's be <laughs> honest. Uh, okay, step one complete. We just tell people, hey, step don't, two, the don't fo- work today. The Foot Clan is mighty and strong. They are. Um, we've and asked, they're they're everywhere. They're international. We have asked a lot of them over the years. This may be the tallest task we've given. <laughs> well, they're undefeated, so I know they're coming through. Um, but yeah, we're excited. We've got a, a good show for you today. Talk about a little bit of hype news going on. Uh, we've got mailbag on today's show. Uh, other fantasy football information for you. A reminder for the UDK. You know, a lot of a lot of people. They've been with us a while. They they get the gist. They understand what it's all about. Uh, every year we've been working to improve it, but if you're new, uh, that's the ultimate draft kit. I just want to give you the rundown of what's included. All of our tier-based rankings, all of our premium detailed season-long mm. stat projections. We have 100-plus player profile videos, which Jason was awake for all of, made it through all of them. Impressive. Very strategically <laughs> planned lunches to where he would not be in hibernation. 
Uh, custom cheat sheets, the cheat sheet creator, where you can go in and import your scoring setting, something that uh, is very valuable. Uh, the sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values. We've added custom player marking for the app and the web, so you can favorite players. You can mark your keepers for your league. You can remove players as they're drafted. Uh, it can be your kind of uh, just sidekick throughout the draft. Risk and upside meters. These are new this year. We've had risk ratings in the past. We have not had upside until this year. It's a way to kind of find those diamonds in the rough later in the draft, players that could win you your league. We have consistency charts. Um, we have a history of being uh, of, of winning accuracy-related awards with these season-long rankings. So we, we put a lot of effort into being correct so that you can – have the best kind of foundation for your season. And then there's a lot on top of that. Um, could, could you imagine what you just said, sitting there knowing that someone else at the table, at your draft table, has that, and you don't? It's terrifying. <sighs> yeah, I mean, the, the stuff nightmares are made of. Yeah, Like home invasion. And so one of the things... Being at the draft with someone else says you can you don't yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's scary i think you got the order wrong but yeah <laughs> but since you're a lot of you have it now and you're in there share your feedback with us on social media you can find us on twitter at the ff ballers let us know your favorite features let us know anything that you you find uh we may tuck some easter eggs in there at some point in time the team has been pushing hard for that uh, um they're easily entertained and so we may. I mean, who doesn't love a good Easter egg? Yeah, so we may tuck a little uh, Easter egg in there. We'll get that out on socials, let you know uh, what to look for. And if you find it, maybe you'll get a little something. Maybe, you know, a back rub from Al Borland. Ooh. That'll be one of the things on the docket. <laughs> I know right where it is, so <laughs> I'm getting that back rub. <laughs> uh, anything else you guys want to add? That's ultimatedraftkit.com. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Everybody that's pre ordered it, supported it. The show th over the years. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, we, we're trying to grow together with you. And ultimately, we want to equip you to make great decisions. We don't want to tell you what to do. We're willing. I mean, Jason, you're, you're willing. I'll tell them what to do. But, uh, but we want to equip you to make your own decisions. So uh, quick question of the day. This one comes in from YouTube. Uh, Tommy wants to know, ballers, what is one hot take that you all agree on. I thought this question was awesome because um, we do a lot of episodes where we're kind of on our own islands sharing our information. We just did one on Tuesday. But here's one where, like, you know, I yeah. know we hate to agree, but, <laughs> but we've done it. We have done it. We've done it on a couple of players, so we thought we'd give you one that we are higher than consensus on and one that we are lower than consensus on. We'll start with who we are lower than consensus on. It is sad. I don't think anyone here dislikes this player or thinks that this isn't one of the best running backs in all of football. I think this one's pretty spicy, too. But Jonathan Taylor, who I think in your home leagues is usually seen as like the third running back, fourth running back, somewhere around there, um, we all have significantly outside the top five. We've got him as a back-end RB1, whether it's Andy at nine, Mike at 12, me at seven, um, there are worries with the system he's going to be in, with the specific type of quarterback he's playing with, who can vulture goal line touchdowns and not check the ball down to him as much as he had when he was the running back one. Those are the two main worries, but it's more than just those two specifics, right? The total offense. How many total yards is this team going to have? How many total points is this team going to have? And those things are going to matter. I mean, when I when I see that we're all lower, it does put the fear of God within me. Absolutely. I mean, there, there is an aspect here of like, look, we go out, we stat these players out one by one. We're looking at the breakdown. We're looking at all the factors that you're saying. And then the stats end up this way. But there, there, there's a small part of me that's like, what on earth are you doing? This is a this is a, a player that will overcome any of those obstacles with relative ease because he is better than most players in the league. Uh, it feels you, stupid. It feels stupid. Yeah. But it is a hot take we agree well, on but, as of right now. But, it, I mean, it it just it happens because the, the stats make sense. It's like if if Jonathan Taylor's target share goes down, if the total overall targets goes down while that share is going down, I mean, it it changes things. It's like if it, it the, the, the problem <laughs> with Nick Chubb, his whole career has been he is – outstanding he's one of the best running backs arguably a top three running back in the league since he's come in 
Averaged over five yards a carry for his entire career. And yet, he has never been an elite fantasy football running back because he's just not used that way. So now imagine Nick Chubb gets Anthony Richardson here as his rookie, as the quarterback, and he's a rookie, and you have no idea what's going to go on with, with the offense. And you would be like, well, I have to slightly fade Nick Chubb because that's the situation that Jonathan Taylor finds himself in. Richardson could absolutely blow us away and surprise the NFL, surprise the world, and be ready to go day one. But there's just so much evidence that that skill position players, they they suffer from rookie quarterbacks and running backs suffer from mobile quarterbacks. I mean, there's there is reason to be optimistic because he's an excellent player, but you should be concerned just based off of uh, the history of how these things have always worked. And I guess I, I would throw in there, like, it, it's terrifying because we've seen the, the, the talent on display. But let's be very fair here for fantasy purposes. Every year, there are five or six of the top, you know, 10 to 12 picks that do not perform. Absolutely. Even close to expectation. So, you know, it, like it's Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, I mean, like Jonathan Taylor last year. I mean, you can go out there and you can say, well, we, we just need to play it safe. We're never going to make a, a, a profound statement about any player and just play it safe according close to the vast consensus. But that's not how it has ever played out, and it won't this year. So, you know, we're not going to be able to – we're not going to sit here in our rankings and go, well, I predict that Jonathan <laughs> Taylor has a uh, high ankle sprain in week eight. Right. But you are going to have to kind of figure out where these players are going to have some variability. And look, I saw I saw somebody's rankings the other day, and it was McCaffrey, and it was Pollard number two. Hey, that, and, that doesn't bother me. And so you kind of you, you gasp for a minute. Uh -huh. But like those type of things are going to happen. They happen every single year. Yeah, uh, and on the flip side of a player that we like more than consensus, that's kind of hot takey but all three of us just happened to naturally be in agreement when our stats were done, is another running back, Antonio Gibson. Right now, on both sleeper and underdog, he's the running back 38. He's a double-digit round pick. He's not someone that people are clamoring for, and we don't have him here as a top-10 running back, but he is on that like RB2-3 range where he should be very relevant. Uh, you know, We've got him in the 20s. And we see Eric Bieniemy coming to town, uh, hopefully helping this offense. We see J.D. McKissick leaving, and the target volume that he was soaking up has to go somewhere, and there's really not another pass-catching back in this backfield. So we have him um, significantly higher than Brian Robinson Jr., uh, you know, as far as fantasy rankings and half PPR scoring. I think we all we all agree there, right? We we do. Yes. Uh, I think we share the optimism, the possibility. It is a weird situation in Washington. There was some recent hype train news about. Uh, do we have that quote, Kyle? Uh, well, not this quote. This one says uh, Ron Rivera was hyping up. <laughs> hey, he was hyping read up the his quote. He was he was hyping up the pass catching. Lots of pass catching hype and buzz for Antonio Gibson. And the quote was, especially in space, he's a load. Look okay? out. Look out. This is hilarious. Don't want to get hit by that. No, th this is hilarious to me because um, I don't know if Ron Rivera know knows this, but he's been on his team for a long time. Like Antonio <laughs> Gibson has been there. And, um, you know, you this know, Antonio Gibson kid, he's got some pass catching I don't chops. know if this is the painting you hang in your house and you never stop to stare at it because it's just been hanging on the wall for three or four years. Um. Uh, I don't know if this uh, – I was asking Jason before the show. I don't know if this is the festral from Harry Potter where you can't see it until you've witnessed death and mm, they've seen enough ah. in, the, in the backfield to where now you can see it. Oh, that's the guy. Yeah. But for whatever reason, this is the offseason Ron Rivera is deciding to to reinvest his hype train uh, attention to to Antonio Gibson. And the truth is, is he can catch a ton of passes. He's the most athletic and the most effective back that they have. I mean, we've, I mean, the ride the ride is going to be just a, a just a bumpy one. We yes. have seen this player be a top twelve running back two of the last three years, and he's super young. So it's not like well, how how could you think he could be good? Well, he's been good. 
and the, he should have more opportunity in the passing game. The the insane part for me of all the success we've seen from Antonio Gibson, I personally feel like he's been misused essentially his entire career. And you like you drafted a player who can do one thing, and then you wanted him to be something else. And so uh, maybe now he'll be. Uh, unlocked to to be a truly difference making pass catching running back, and I think that it's he's worthy of discussion now. He's worthy of hype now because the cost for Antonio Gibson sure. has has moved into a place where it, it, it's pretty much upside. A, yes, uh, you know there are a handful of players out there with guaranteed opportunities that are going well below. I mean, there's a tenth round pick right now. Yeah, uh, another another name in that category, and I don't know what you guys think, but Jerome Ford in, in Cleveland. Sure, oh yeah, absolutely. Is another name where it's like way down there, and you're like, oh, that guy's gonna get. I think he's a lottery ticket insurance piece, but I mean, we we saw, you know, last year the backup role not be that valuable. Chubb took most stuff to himself, but he is like the last man standing. The Ernest Johnson left, Kareem Hunt left, so but Kareem Hunt did have. If I'm remembering right, like he had some games at the beginning of the year, and then it feels like it felt like the team completely turned on Kareem Hunt of the, the yeah, 123 built, attempts last year, 35 built, receptions last year. That's not, I mean, somebody's going yeah. to fill uh, that role. It built up to well, Kareem Hunt's probably going to get traded, and then I think they, out of spite, said, "No, we're not going to trade you. We're just going to keep you and bury you on the depth chart." I do believe that. They want a backup running back used a little bit more. It Jerome Ford will be the one who gets the shot. Is he good enough? I mean, his production profile coming out of college was was interesting. So he, he is, and the, I guess we're just that was a little sidebar to, yeah, to Ford that we stayed on. And but. then the sidebar of I don't think we have him ranked extremely high, but it's just it's Gus Edwards' season yet again is of looking at depth charts, guys who have a huge opportunity in. And like Baltimore has always been a running back by committee and there's excitement for JK Dobbins. And it's like, you don't hear, we're not talking about anybody else on the Ravens. Meanwhile, Gus Edwards is there. He's now recovered or another year recovered from his injury. Is he a nasty boy? Uh, uh I yeah. don't, I don't know if I will, oh, he's a nasty boy. Can, Mike. Get, can we bring, can push that button. Can we bring back some he's Gus got Edwards own, button? He's got please? his own drop. Can we find don't, that? It's been so nasty. long. Yeah, that's better. He qualifies. He's not nasty. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's not nasty. Is Jerome Ford Overridden. nasty? Yes, Jerome, yeah, Jerome Ford, Ford is real nasty. Real nasty. Yeah, look, nasty boys are like Hassan Haskins, Jerome Ford. You're putting Gus Edwards in that category. That is disrespectful. Uh, it's Gus, been, it's here, been a minute, man. Here's, here's why he I put averages like here's, five yards a carry. No, no, no. Back, no. back in the awesome. early forties, he's awesome. <laughs> but the, here's why I say he's a nasty boy, because he is my most common last pick in underdog best ball drafts last Ooh. 18th round the last eight 18th like, round's nasty I, i've Mike. gotten him there a handful of times when he when mm. he falls to the end that's, Tell me that's not nasty. that's that is, just that's people being asleep at the wheel i don't know the jury the jury might find him nasty after that evidence sir when you <laughs> when you have carried the ball over 500 times in your career and you average 5.2 yards he's a awesome. carry, that's not nasty no i love him. all right um uh, there you go. Antonio Gibson, Jonathan Taylor. We actually agree, gentlemen. We'll see if it carries out Every throughout once in the a while. whole offseason. We did let's... immediately disagree on Jerome Ford, though. So we got, I mean, we got <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. good, let's talk about a player. You know, so. And the whole nasty debate. My That's true. Just, That's true, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to hit the drop, but two quick pieces of news. Jordan Addison, mm -hmm. rookie wide receiver, uh, also somebody that Jason is painting pictures of i think yeah, yeah. um poorly but yes uh not participating at voluntary My name is simon <laughs> <laughs> like to do drawings um not participating. Can, can we get a segment of jason in the tub <laughs> showing his drawings of yes players? i think we have to they're gonna be really good you'll like them a lot new youtube segment um yeah, what was I saying? Jordan Addison not participating due to minor injury at OTAs. It is that time. It's fine. It, yeah, you just uh, we'll we'll ta start talking about lingering injuries later. Like, yep. in training camp, if you keep missing time and and it lingers into the season, then Jason will have something to say. Um, and then the Jets, I, I I saw two reports this week. The first one said Brees would not be ready for training camp. The second one from Robert Sala, the head coach, said that they are very optimistic he will be ready for week one. So he's going to do most of his healing between the beginning of training camp 
Yeah, the, in week these one. are not conflicting reports at all. The, you know, Happy birthday, Brees Hall, by the yeah, way. Yeah, his birthday was yesterday. Aww. He's 22. He is uh. a young, young man. Um, th- these are not conflicting reports to be like, oh, we hope he's ready for week one, but no, he's not ready for no. a training camp. That is the expected timeline. Uh, if you look at our injury um, tools in the UDK, th- that's what we already had later. Those out. are reports, Jason. I couldn't think of the word. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> the injury tools uh, in report form <laughs> do confirm what you were saying. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any other like hype news to talk about, Brooks. Are you hyped about uh, the fact DeAndre Hopkins – currently has the highest odds to go to the Dallas Cowboys. Would you be uh, excited about that? Heck, yeah. It'd be fun. I mean, if you gave – it would be the most upside-down offseason to dismiss Zeke, hire Schottenheimer, and then bring in Brandon Cooks oh. and DeAndre Hopkins <laughs> to go with Gallup and CD Lamb. And just drop the passing attempts down to the 400s. <laughs> oh, and you still <laughs> drop the passing attempts. You've got enough guys that would be upset about that, I think. You're like, yeah, we've got. See, I got a Porsche, I got a Ferrari, but I, I can't, I can't find myself not using my Pinto. Yeah, yeah, or walking to work. All right, uh, quick break. Back with some mailbag. Oh, I, uh, I did not mention Aaron Rodgers currently limited at OTAs with a calf strain slash, uh, I believe, attending a lot of the Taylor Swift tour. Yeah, I mean, when you're a Swifty, you, you got to do what you got to do. Dancing. I did. He was. Uh, did that make you think better or worse of of Aaron Rodgers? Because he was really he was, he was not ashamed. It. He was moving and grooving. I, I look, I, I, I know that Rodgers can be a curmudgeon on the field, but I, I don't know. He was getting down. Are you uh are you a Swifty, Mike? I am not. I I know the songs that I hear occasionally on the mm-hmm. the radio or the streaming. I have no problem, but just n- didn't dive in. Whoa! I I so I had not seen, and it makes me think lower of him <laughs> uh, after watching. Oh yeah, I don't have the music on. Um, <laughs> would obviously. that make a difference? It, I hope so. I hope it would make a massive difference because without the music, just watching this. Just, oh, is you adjusting your ranks? Uh, he's he's living his best life. Why are you judging his dance? He's moves? closing his eyes and everything. Yes, he is. I wish I was. <laughs> Look at this guy having a good time, enjoying himself. What a jerk! You've never I been known l- to. I am happy for him. If Andy was back there doing the exact same dance, <laughs> I would be like, "Good for you, Andy." I think less of you. Okay, it, it, they're not mutually exclusive. No, but they don't affect your ranks. No. Okay, into the mailbag we go. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, yeah. All right. Our first question comes from Instagram. By the way, if you have a question, you can dial our voicemail hotline. That is 302 464 TFFB. You can also go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click on that, submit a question button. First one from Instagram from MCO8 says If you walk out of the draft with Geno Smith and Anthony Richardson, how do you feel on a scale of one to ten? And I assume that would be Ooh. how do you feel about your quarterback position? Sure. Okay. Let's um, uh, let's are we say a number this, at the same time. Are we doing this blindly? Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, I got my number. Oh, oh I draw my I, I, my number's real small. That's fine. We'll say it out loud. Okay. I'm an, I'm an eight. I'm, I'm a, a seven. I'm a six. Okay. Well, I'll start first then, since I'm in the middle. Um, I would not be super excited about this. Because I do think that Geno Smith, while on a whole, I think he's going to have a good season. I'm not sure he's going to be a weak winner. He's not the type of uh, player that I don't want a stat accumulator. I want someone to go out there and be able to dominate a game here or there. That's just my preference at the quarterback position. Um, but the hope here is that you get that in Anthony Richardson in the second half. I don't like drafting Anthony Richardson for where he's going, but we even talked about like, this is a good if you want to if you want to grab Anthony Richardson, then it's because you're spending high draft capital on a on a pretty big wild card, then you could spend late draft capital on Geno. It's a good combination. Just I, a refresher on Geno. He was the number five overall quarterback last yeah. season. Uh, through a, a tremendous amount of consistency throughout the year, it wasn't a top a, a ton of top performances. Like it's a little bit bewildering when a number five guy. Um, only finished at five or better four times 
Yeah, the truth. You know, when we when we went through the truth episodes, you saw that it, it, he was the first. Like, the truth is not that he was the fifth best quarterback at all. He he, he did accumulate stats, finished at number five, but he did not help you win games. He didn't cross cross the threshold. Uh, of winning games at all, thirty five point three percent of his games exceeded twenty points. That's my own. That's the reason I went with six, is because there is an outcome here where you really quickly in the season want to play neither, and so yeah, that could um, You know when when you're into. I mean, I know that's the strategy around the the Anthony Richardson is find yourself some consistency later. Um, you know, Geno could take a step forward. Yeah, like you could he see, has a first round wide yeah. receiver to go along with two elite wide receivers. I, I'm, and pass catching with Charbonnet that's arrived and, and, and there are there's a outcome there for sure. Yes. Uh, I'm more so I don't I don't I'm, mind it. I'm more excited about Gino. I would have been a six and a half if I could have you know gone decibels. Decibels? Decibels. <laughs> you gotta decibels? get you gotta get real loud. <laughs> if I was allowed to scream it, I would have given think the I extra said half. decimals. No. I don't think Deucer's you did. Alley? What do we got? We got a vote over there? You said decibels. All right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I guess they would be experts in there. Yeah, but all right, and you went eight, Mike. So yeah, you're more just, optimistic. I mean, I'm in on Gino as they a, play each other week weekly. one. Ooh, who are you starting? Gino, Gino for Gino. sure. Gino. But uh, it, that is they, worth noting that Gino's first. Uh, that's not true. No, Seattle plays the Rams, and Indianapolis plays Jacksonville. Yeah. Weird that I you would see. say that. Well, but I, I did the, say that because I, I didn't realize those were oh. were the ex. You know, showing me what the schedule was there, Kyle. But, uh, My bad. My bad. The, the, uh, I was ironically just about to talk about the schedule for Gino where uh, he opens with the Rams and then the Lions and the Panthers. Oh. So it is a – That's a hot start. It is a very nice – you know, when when you look at streaming candidates, late-round quarterbacks that you're taking, you want someone that can get off to a hot start. So that, that does uh, bode well for Gino. This one's very simple. Instagram question from Bearded Dragon 92 is Cam Akers worth drafting? Yep. Yep. Yeah, the he was one of the, the more shocking players when the, the stats were finally done that he ended the season so strong uh, on a bad team. So it's like if you project the Rams to be a bad team, well, Cam Akers showed – like he looked like he was back. You know, you were, were now two years or so removed from his Achilles injury. That's about when – these these running backs can start coming back. The reason we don't normally see it is because a, a team has to wait two years on a running back, which in the NFL is not necessarily something you need to do. Uh, but he survived the draft. He, he's got, uh, I believe, a fifth round Kyron Williams and a sixth round. Uh, who's who am I thinking? Zach of? Evans. Zach Evans behind him is so it's like the draft capital behind him is not there. If Acres looks anything close to what they thought he was, now multiple years recovered. And like what Stafford's going to be back. Cooper Cup is back. Like this, the Rams could be better than than you think they're going to be. And then if Akers is the starting running back for that team, he I mean, we should were, be drafted. We were just here with Seattle last year. The off season was spent talking about how bad they're going to be, especially on offense. Right. And the 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 pedigree of Stafford is vastly superior than the surprise we got from Geno. Yes. So from an offensive side, like it doesn't mean they're going to win a bunch of games. But from the offensive side, with Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford and company, they could be a lot better. Sean McVay is 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 known for his offensive abilities, and look, I had to be convinced of this. Uh, we were going through player profile videos on the UDK, and then we kind of got to the end of it, and it was like the case for Cam Akers is is solid. We always say, well, follow follow the money, follow what the team did, not just what they said. Which, by the way, Sean McVay came out and he said, I expect Cam Akers to build on what he did at the end of the year, which is a a bit of an endorsement, and then you're like, ah, oh, but follow the money. Well, they, they did. They didn't do anything. Yeah, they did nothing. I know Zach Evans was a highly touted high school recruit and someone that a lot of people really liked. He was a five star recruit, and you know, I I liked his college film, but they passed on him plenty of times. The whole league did as well. When you come in in the sixth round, you're not you're not just coming out there and winning the job unless the the starter gets injured. It's the starter's job, and building on that success of what Cam Akers did at the end of last year, the last six games he was averaging 16.8 fantasy points per game he was on pace for 294 carries 1450 yards and 17 touchdowns he was an absolute maniac 
nine per carry on large volume. He looked great. Don't forget how much we all loved Cam Akers coming into his rookie season. You know, it was like he was he was supposed to be a star, got an unfortunate yeah, I mean, horrible the, I injury. Like, I like the original Achilles that he came yeah, into the right, league right, with. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I think he does too. Yeah. He preferred that one. But two years removed from it, I think uh, he has. And, and the, the nice thing about it is he's not being drafted as if you assume any success. It's not a very hefty price to take the shot on him. And when you look at the running backs going around in that range. That's what I was going to ask you. Who are, what are some of those names? Yeah. I'll, Just to I'll, put I'll, it to the I'll test. I'll put that up. But I don't think there's a lot of people in that range that you go, hey, this guy could be top 10. Like he could be a bona fide league winning type of back. Um, so you've got James Conner, David like Montgomery, A.J. Okay. Dillon, um, Damian I, Pierce. Yeah, I mean, I I think I've got him ahead of those last two names and maybe right equivalent with the other two. I mean, yeah. are you taking James Conner or are you taking Ooh, Cam Akers? I think I'm going to take Conner because of the pass catching. Lean Conner, that, yeah. but that's a – that's a debate. That yeah. is a good debate. I, I'm not sure. That's uh, that's one where I think if I was in two leagues, I'd take two different guys. All right, let's go ahead and move on here. Um, Instagram question from the Doc Holiday: Higher finish, Pacheco or Ken Walker? Walker. I'll take Walker. As will Pacheco I. Pacheco does not catch passes, and his hot streak towards the end of last year was coincided with when Clyde Edwards-Alaire I mean, was they're... not on the roster or was not active. To me, it's more touchdown upside. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, my my reaction was like, oh, a Walker easily, but they're kind of similar. No, they're, they're they're pretty close. But it, it, while Charbonnet is larger than than Walker, and maybe he takes over the goal line work, there it, there does exist a world where Clyde edwards alaire is swapped in at the goal line as well. We just we don't we don't have the information yet of when Pacheco was installed as the true main running back. Clyde was hurt during that time period. Yeah. He's Clyde is not the future for the Kansas City Chiefs, but he will factor into their plans. Maybe. I, yeah, I, I, mean, I think he will. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I afraid that Clyde's future significance to the fantasy football world will be as a complete distraction. Now, he's hurt you as a player you drafted. Now he may hurt you as a player that you have that you think about that you shouldn't for the running back room in Kansas City. That's my that's my concern is gotcha. that is that um, his name will keep getting brought up and maybe it doesn't matter. But um, all right, who do you prefer at their current ADP this year? This question comes in off of Instagram from Nick Perez. So ADP question: Tua, who I almost took in a best ball recently. Uh, and who's a ninth round pick, the quarterback 11 off the board, 908, or Aaron Rodgers, the 10th pick in the 10th round at QB 16. Um, I'm on Tua's side on this one. I am as well. We, if you don't remember how the season went last year, he was excellent. Um, and then he, he went from excellent to on fire and uh, obviously had the head injuries, missed some time, came back did not look the same but if he is back to full strength the weapons that he has obviously Aaron Rodgers has some good weapons too I am I, I think that the higher ceiling outcome here if both players hit is actually Tua not the first ballot Hall of Famer but Mike I know you're pretty high on Aaron yeah, Rodgers I, I do like Rodgers but I, I have Tua ranked ahead just a couple spots um, and that at that point in the draft it it doesn't matter. I just rather get the guy that I want, and I think that the the upside for Tua is a bit higher than Rogers. All right, this question comes in from Instagram, and it's going to reset us from our quick question earlier because it is it is not a situation that we have uh, any sort of agreement on. Instagram question from Jacob Gi. Simple thoughts on Devon A Chain. Uh, Devon A Chain is a rookie running back. Uh, he was drafted by the Miami Dolphins. He is joining a backfield that currently has uh, Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson Jr., uh, along with uh, the gas man. So Devon A-Chain, explosive, undersized. What's the weight on A-Chain? Under 200. Yeah, he was, I think he was 189. 188. Um, so I'm sure he's 189 by now. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. <laughs> um, 
So we have we have kind of conflicting views of how we think this background uh, this backfield is going to be. Um, I'll state mine real quick and get out of the way for Jason. Uh, I simply view this backfield as a committee, one in which Devon A. Chain will be a more significant real life NFL contributor than he will be a fantasy contributor. I think that Mike McDaniel will devise five to ten touches for a chain in the running game, mostly in the passing game, in the screen game, um, and use that explosiveness, potentially special teams as well. But I don't see a, I don't see any path personally for a significant fantasy contribution. I think their commitment to Mostert and Wilson, who are bigger uh, between the tackle runners is uh, and, and have performed well. I think that those guys are going to get snaps. And I think, Mike, you're more on my side of the yes. A-chain argument. Um, anything that you want to add to my comments before Jason? No, just like it's I, – I, I thought A-chain was a little bit overhyped and just in the overall draft period. I mean, the, the fact that he was a third-round pick, that's it's interesting. But, I mean, this team is just – they have so many useful running backs. They're a pass-heavy team. And they are not a pass heavy to the running back team. They're kind of like right in the middle of the road. But if you're looking, you're like Mostert had seven percent of the targets. Jeff Wilson was at four percent of the targets. I mean the 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 the, the targets that are actually going to running backs are getting spread out all over the place. They're not consolidated to one player, and that doesn't say anything about the still uh, floating around rumors that the this Dalvin Cook situation of Miami was kind of the the most brought up team of a trade partner for Minnesota. It may, that may or may not happen, uh, but I'm, that's just, that's another kind of wrinkle for me. But if, even if the, they move forward with the depth chart that they have, I don't see how a chain is anywhere close to the leader of touches for the, the three running backs. Yeah. The way that I've got it statted out, he is not the leader in carries from this running back room. However, he is – so this was a player I was excited to be off of coming into the draft because solely of weight. There's just not a lot of history of successful fantasy options at the running back position that are sub 200 pounds, let alone sub 190. That just doesn't usually work in the NFL. Then he was selected on the day two to the perfect – landing spot for his skill set this guy is not uh, a, a good athlete fast he's four three two he is lightning out, out there on the field he can catch the ball and he fits this scheme perfect the fact that they didn't have a first round pick and you go well they like Jeff Wilson they like Mostert no they used them and they like I'm sure and they like and them. resigned him this offseason and, and brought him in for cheap money and also we're wanting to bring in Dalvin Cook and find someone else and then spent you know, they didn't have a first round pick. They spent a good day two pick on a chain. I think he's going to get enough work in the passing game and in the running game. But I, m my point is his explosiveness. And I think what this coaching staff can do with him, he'll have some fantasy success. So I'm actually higher on, I'm certainly higher on, on a chain than you two are. It will be one of the most fascinating backfields to watch. Cause I think we can all agree that if you just look at the, core of the Dolphins running game you'd be like there is value to be mined yes, in them hills absolutely now if it splits three ways eh, it's not gonna be good uh best ball way better because you don't have to make the right picks you know there's oh, it, be was, games it was awful where, last year deciding I had Mostert and Jeff Wilson exactly, in the league and it was just, like which one do I play this week I have no idea and and they both had awesome weeks oh just, hugely. You, you couldn't plan it so may, maybe this is more of a best ball strategy than than you know your redraft strategy but if I had to say well if one player was to emerge as a consistent like this has just become our dude week in and week out I don't think it's going to be the older Jeff Wilson and the older Raheem Mostert. I think, man, this young gun just played his way on. I mean, the Jeff reports Wilson's out of very camp. Young though, still. The, the reports out of camp right He's now 27. from Jeff Wilson. Wilson? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of Mostert. Being, Mostert's like 30, I was thinking of Mostert uh, being 31, and then relative to Mostert. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Jeff Wilson was already coming out talking about how crazy this kid is on the field. So that that's just how I see it. Better yeah, I, best ball for big play, 60 yeah. yard touchdown runs. But if one player emerges. I would put my money on aging. I'll be I'll be interested to see how they use him. I think I think one of the things that have crossed has crossed my mind about usage has been Tua. Like Tua is like dealing with concussions, and this is a very small man 
for pass protection situations. So do they pre-release him? Do they put him in a situation where he's not pass protecting because of design plays? Um, that third down roll will be very interesting. All right, let's get into some best ball. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> Why? Okay, so we, we did say last week, by the way, welcome to Best Ball Breakdown, brought to you by Underdog. Uh, new segment every week leading up into the season. Jason's grumpy because we said on last week's episode that we were going to spin up a draft. And Kyle, thank you. You spun up an underdog draft for us to all jump in. Uh, uh, all writers from the fantasy footballers, along with yourself, um, is is Al or, or Brooksy in there? The no, Papa Josh is in here. Yeah, right? Papa, Papa Josh. Josh is in there, and obviously Mike, myself, Jason. Jason's grumpy because he doesn't like his team. <laughs> I mean, that's that's it. That that is it. Is um, that the message for the best ball breakdown? Sometimes you don't like your team. Yeah, sometimes you don't like your team, but sometimes. Sometimes you don't like your team because you make a whoopsie doozle. <laughs> and that's what happened in this league. I don't know how this happened because I'm always on the clock. I'm always checking my app. And for some reason, I go I go to like see how close I am on the clock. And I look at my roster, which I was liking, and I go, TJ Hawkinson? Wait, I didn't draft TJ Hawkinson. I timed out on a pick. And let me just say, uh, you know, p people, may maybe TJ Hawkinson's great. But he is one of the worst picks, in my opinion, right now in all of underdog because he, he's not going to be someone that separates from the field like an Andrews or a Kelsey, but he still costs one he of those. feels like a floor pick. Y yeah, and he well, you Sorry, go ahead. You, you made the point of basically saying when you take a tight end early and you take a big name, you're trying to reduce the amount of tight ends you need to take. You, exactly. You could have a build – in a best ball team of two tight ends if you rock an Andrews like I did in this draft yeah. or uh, Kelsey. Yeah. But if you take Hawkinson, you still feel the pressure to have three tight ends. I feel like I've got to take three tight ends. So now I'm just a position player short in the good rounds. Uh, so I'll go through my team. I went uh, well, well, real quick though. Yeah. Would, would it have been possible for you to set maybe some players you did desire into your queue? Yes, and I should have done that. <laughs> a tip for a clan. Yeah, this, here's your best ball tip. Number one, uh, check. Don't time out. Yeah. Number two, have a have a queue of a couple players. <laughs> should something come up in life? Because life happens. Life yeah. gets in the way, and you go back to your phone and you go, "Oh crap, I timed out." But go ahead and, and share the rest of your roster. Yeah. So, far. so we we are what ten picks in, or sorry, eight picks in. Right yeah. Now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, eight picks in right now. Um, I have Saquon Barkley, Najee Harris, David Montgomery, and this one will surprise the Foot Clan. Damian Pierce, who I have besmirched and badmouthed recently. However, Mike brings this up all the time. There's there's a point in which yes. players just have value, and I guess I talked badly enough about him that our group of people refused to draft him. I got him 24 picks after ADP a full two rounds later. That's where he should be going. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown, Mike Williams, Marquise Brown, and TJ Hawkinson. So usually when I'm eight picks in, I want more than three wide receivers personally. Yeah, you this got is a just, high T running back build here. I, I do. So I'm probably done with running backs. I will I will grab one running back later on, and then I, I'm going to have to go probably three quarterbacks as I don't have any, and maybe two tight ends, probably three tight ends, and then the rest wide receivers. Yeah, I mean, I, Mike, before you share your team, I, I know that you, you stole a player that I was eyeballing uh. um, and didn't get close to ADP. I ended up with Trevor Lawrence as my quarterback, um, which was just ahead of his ADP. I got him at pick 56. I felt the I felt desperate to take him there because he was a tier or two better than the other quarterbacks on the board, and that is because you took Justin Herbert much earlier than his current ADP, but I know you're a believer as I am. And the upside of Herbert this year. My, the rest of my team is teammate Austin Eckler, Jameer Gibbs, James Cook at running back, and then Devontae Adams, Mike Evans. And then uh, I got Jordan Addison, uh, 14 picks after his ADP. Nice. And, um, but my team is – I'm feeling the impact of Mark Andrews early because uh, I would love to Imagine have – Imagine having Hawkinson. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the worst. Um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I had to pick – Andrews at pick 32. Uh, I don't know how many of your pile of underdog builds, Jason, have Mark Andrews on. A them. lot of them. Okay. 
And do you end up in this position traditionally feeling the way I did that you're you're maybe – or do you not take a quarterback? Uh, usually on those teams, I don't take a quarterback. If I take a quarterback, it's it's for the stack. I go Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews and then let the chips you, you Yeah, know, that makes more sense. I think I would have been happier using pick 56 on another wideout. A wideout, I don't know, like Tyler Lockett that I would have drafted <laughs> instead of TJ Hawkinson. Mike, why don't you tell sure. us who you have at so, wide receiver? So I'm drafting from the edge. I was at the 12 spot. I opened up the draft with uh, with Stephon Diggs and Garrett Wilson. I wanted to get some some uh, top tier wide receiver talents. You know, the, the Diggs is known. The projection for Garrett Wilson, and then by the time the draft rolls around, back to me again. Uh, it was Keenan. I was looking at you know Keenan Allen is there, Mike Williams is there, and Herbert was still there, which it's way ahead of ADP. But it was because I'm on the edge. You don't have a Her choice. Yeah, I don't have it. If I want someone like Justin Herbert here, I got to make it happen. And it was, oh well, I can take this. I can build a stack right here on the edge. So that felt pretty good. So I opened the draft with three wide receivers and a quarterback. Then Jason made his error and. Uh, oh wait, no, and so I had to take Tyler Lockett there, and then at that point you're like, oh man, the running backs start getting a mighty thin. While I'm I'm really powered up at my wide receiver position, but James Conner was there, who we're kind of in agreement uh, should have himself a very solid year. Draft finally comes back to me. Damian Pierce was there, and I still I still don't know how I feel about this guy. We did our we did the the video profile on Rashad White and it was kind of like man I just don't know because it's hard to see the path to true difference making the path to volume is very very easy but you know that the pass attempts are going to come way down he was incredibly inefficient on the ground but also Leonard Fournette was incredibly inefficient on the ground so perhaps that was just a Buccaneers thing and maybe they get it figured out but I took Rashad White as my RB2 and then I'm still in on the upside of Rashad Bateman, so I took him there. So I'm sitting on two running backs, four wide receivers, and a quarterback, meaning that I will be drafting a lot of running backs. And I uh, kind of specifically went with Bateman right there. Here's my Could best have had ball. Zay Flowers, obviously. Sure. Uh, here's kind of my best ball tip. I'm my This build is very hungry for running backs, but the next chunk – of ADP running backs are guys that I just don't care for. I don't I don't see a upside with them, and yet they're going to sit at the top of the ADP, and they're going to entice people to in the next twenty plus picks to take them because the next section of running backs I like a bunch of those guys. So what I'm, are some names in that next section? Uh, Is the, it like Gibson and yeah yeah Gibson's in there? You know Rashad Penny. There's just there's players who I think that there is a a better path. Dylan. Javante. Well, the Dylan's Are those in, the ones that you want people the, to no, take? The, the ones that I don't want a part of right now is Javante Williams. It's Alvin Kamara, A.J. Dillon, Brian Robinson. I'm not really interested in those players. And then right after them, there's this like four or five pack of running backs who I really like. And I think that their ADP is great. And playing the game, they should, some should make it back to me. And I felt that going with the upside to pick of Rashad Bateman instead of just saying, I got to get a running back, so I'm going to take... Javante Williams, who may not be ready to play, that was the that was what I thought was best for my team at that point. And Jason has TJ Hawkinson. And Jason yep. has TJ Hawkinson. The hawk strap. <laughs> Feeling good. All right, that was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to $100 using the code BALLERS. That is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Go out there. Spread your wings. Enjoy your UDK, and if you don't have it, it's ultimatedraftkit.com. Let us know what you think. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.